Hello and thank you for watching this video tutorial on OS Forensics by Passmark Software. OS Forensics is a feature-rich, versatile, and robust computer forensic solution used by a wide variety of professionals and organizations worldwide. In today's video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to create a forensic image of a hard drive. Now a forensic image may sometimes be referred to as a bitstream image or uh, a physical image or a, a clone. Uh, and, and what this is, is it's just an exact sector by sector duplication of a hard drive or some other media storage device. Now this process includes capturing the allocated space or file system as well as the unallocated space on a device which is the area um, on a disk that forensic examiners and data recovery experts that's where they recover the deleted files from uh, through techniques such as data carving. Now a forensic image allows an, investig or an examiner to conduct his or her examination on the image file i.e. duplicate so that the data contained on the evidentiary device can in no way be compromised during the exam. Now most forensic images are acquired via some imaging software in a hardware write blocking device which ensures no unintentional writes are made to that media being imaged. Now once imaged the software hashes the image file and compares it to the hash value of the source drive to ensure the hashes match. And this met methodology works great for uh, hard disk drives, but with the advent of solid state drives and their rising popularity, this validation process will need to be reevaluated due to processes associated with solid state drives, such as background, garbage collection, wear leveling, and the trim command. So, for the, f the purposes of this video, we will just be dealing with the software operation of creating a disk image with OS Forensics. And so to start, we will need to launch OS Forensics and click on the Drive Imaging module. So once OS Forensics launches, you'll just need to simply click on the Drive Imaging module located in the lower portion of the workflow that's located here, or simply by clicking on the Drive Imaging icon uh, located just a short distance away here on the start screen uh, menu. Now once you open up the drive imaging uh, module you'll simply need to just choose the drive or device that you wish to image from the source disk drop down menu as seen here. So let's say I want to image uh, physical drive 6 uh, I will simply choose this here and then I'm going to need to give uh, the target image file a, a, a location when I create that. So when I click on this button here I can then give my forensic image a file name. Clicking on the save as type drop down menu you have numerous choices as to which type of image file you would like to create. OS Forensics offers you the ability to create a raw, sometimes referred to as a DD, image file, uh, which will have a .img extension. You can also choose the AFF, AFM, or the AFD open source image types, also known as the advanced forensic format. And then, of course, the ever popular uh, EO1 or .EO1 image format that's commonly referred to as the in case or expert witness formats. Uh, we have also added the ability to create the newer EX01 image file format as well. Uh, something to keep in mind of choosing the AFF or AFD EO1 or the EX01 format. And for this demo, we'll go ahead and do the EO1, which is a most commonly used file, uh, forensic image format. 
But by selecting any one of those, and again, that's the AFF, AFD, E01, or EX01 format, you will have this new option box uh, called compression level that appears. And you'll have the option to compress the image file as well to, as well as to choose a particular compression level. I'll go ahead and choose fast compression. Now you may choose to enter some information concerning the drive such as a description of the media being imaged as well as where the imaging process occurred uh, by documenting the location here. You will notice that the verify image file after completion and the disable shadow copies options are check marked by default. The verify image file after completion option hashes the image file and compares the results to the hash of the source disk as I mentioned earlier in the video. And this is common practice in forensics and therefore is check marked by default. But if you, for whatever reason, don't need to do that, uh, just simply uncheck mark that and save you some time. The other option that is checked, titled Disable Shadow Copy, means that the imaging process will not attempt to use the Windows Volume Shadow service to perform the copy and will instead create a direct sector copy which should typically always be your first choice uh, in a forensic image. The other option you see below that titled attach image metadata file to case on completion. That's a feature that we've added that will allow a user to automatically attach the image verification log to the case report. So as this validation report is often included in a forensic examiner's report anyway, we, we offer the user the ability to save a few steps of, during the report creation phase by going ahead and giving them a tool that will automatically attach it to the case report for them on the front end. And this is just another benefit of having uh, you know, all your forensic types of tools into one main forensic suite as OS Forensics does. So as some programs may have a separate utility for their drive imaging or a separate utility for uh, live memory acquisition and a separate app for registry analysis and a separate program for file decryption and pass it on and on, all of these features and functions are all uh, baked in to the OS Forensics. And then when you couple that with adding the, the ability to install it to USB, as you can see in another video, uh, it, for use on a live system, it really uh, just makes a great overall kind of 360 degree uh, solution for computer forensics. So, uh, once your settings are all checked and correct the way you want them, simply click on the Create Image button to kickstart the process. And you will see the status section and other useful information, including speed and any unreadable data. In uh, regarding unreadable data, uh, if OSF, while, while imaging comes across a sectors that are unreadable, the imaging process in, that OS Forensic uses will fill those sectors with zeros and continue on imaging that drive. And uh, this field lets you know how much data was unreadable uh, due to restricted access or maybe a damaged disk. And that's all there basically is to creating a forensic image. It's a very simple process that really anyone can do. And that's uh, one other thing that we make uh, very simple and easy for our users to accomplish. Now for a logical image creation, you may see our tutorial on how to create a logical image, which we've added into the latest version of OS Forensics and which can be found under our Forensics Copy module. And our forensic image is uh, almost done. Well, actually, the forensic imaging has been done, and now it is verifying that image just on the tail end of that process here. 
So we've made our direct sector copy. And uh, since we had the check mark to verify our image file after completion of the image, that was what you saw there in the status box running. Uh, so that's it. It's all done. And now if we go out to our destination and to look at our forensic image file. So here's our final finished result. We have our EO1 forensic image file. And here's our test.eo1, which is what we named it here. And I've got my kind of image validation file here, which we can take a look at. So we see the image source, we see the file name given, the image file size, we have our date and time stamps, our direct sector copy. Uh, as the copy method, so if this was some other sort of method how we acquired this forensic image, we would have it shown here. Uh, the checksum method, so we've got our MD5, or message digest 5 hashing algorithm that we use, and then this here uh, gives us our validation, or lets us know maybe there was some issue if these don't match. So our checksum source, M drive, here is the MD5 uh, hash value for the source drive and then once we've imaged that drive image the drive and then hashed our test.eo1 we you can see that we have a matching md5 uh, and so that's a look at that kind of that uh, uh, txt file that you can you know if you check mark this box here uh, this would automatically attach this file uh, into your case report for you and if you had had you know an examiner's name here and description location uh, that data would have been filled in here as well for those of you new to forensic imaging you may be wondering what this test.eo2 is and if this had been a large drive say you know 500 gig or uh, one terabyte or something you would have seen a series uh, you know numerous numerous segments, uh, you know, E03, E04, on and on and on, uh, kind of broken down into roughly one and a half gig uh, segments. Uh, and that's just the way we, uh, the EO1 imaging uh, process works. So don't worry if you're completely new to this and you need to bring your forensic image back into OS Forensics for analysis. You won't need to add, you know, highlight, you know, all of the different segments. Simply point it just to that main EO1 file, and uh, OS Forensics will do the rest in bringing all of that uh, data contained in that image into it. To learn more about this feature or any of the others in OS Forensics, please review our OS Forensics help file, which is available on our website. Uh, simply by clicking on the support tab here and scrolling down to the help file section and we have a PDF version that is available free of charge for you to download. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on OS Forensics by Passmark Software. For more information on OS Forensics or any of our many products feel free to reach out to us by email at info at passmark.com or visit us anytime on the web at www.osforensics.com.